Hey guys, how's it going? Culprit here. And in this video now, I'm going to talk to you more about my PC right here, the rig, the components, um, what, what I bought initially, how I've upgraded, and where I sit right now. Um, in the previous video, if you haven't figured out yet, I've decided to break this up into two videos. It just, you know, the, the, the first one got a little long. I didn't want to make a 30 minute uh, setup video. So I'm going to break it down. It's kind of, it kind of works out better that way, actually. The first video is kind of a room tour. I take you around, I showed you my console setup and some other things. I showed you a lot of components here mouse, you know, keyboard, that kind of thing. Um, peripherals, I guess. Now I'm going to talk to you about the case and what is inside this thing. Um, and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a, uh, an image right here. You guys can look at it. I'm going to obviously unminimized. This is uh, from a website called PC Part Picker. If you guys are not familiar, you should be. If you have any interest in, in PC building or anything like that, um, it's a great site. It basically has every component you can want. It checks for compatibility. So if you pick an AMD processor, it's not going to let you pick a motherboard that won't work with it. It's a great feature. I mean, you should still double check yourself, but I mean, for you just tinkering and playing around, trying to squeeze that build into your budget, it's a really, really cool tool. It also instantly, as soon as you pick a component, it'll show you all the latest prices. It'll show you who has the best prices. You really can't beat that. My one recommendation is disregard mail-in rebates. Usually they have a lot of hoops you got to jump through, that kind of thing. Um, and it usually doesn't work out. It usually takes months to get the money back. So don't be lured by rebates. Now, they're usually not worth what they give you. If something like a new egg or an Amazon is charging like 10, 20 bucks more, go with them. Um, it's a fact of life with PC components. Sometimes you have to RMA things, which basically means you have to return it. Um, you might get shipped something that just doesn't work. It, these are electronics. These are sensitive electronics. They're getting shipped. They're getting processed. You know, um, for these prices to go as low as they're going, quality control has probably had to been let go a little. It happens. I haven't had it happen to me, but I've heard enough of it happening. Uh, Clappy, I believe, just put together a PC. He had an issue with his graphics card. So for me, the extra value of having a big company like a Newegg or an Amazon that makes it very easy for you to return things is worth the extra 10 20 bucks, even if that does start to add up at the end of your build. I, I understand that, but that's my advice. You go your route what fits best for you. So let's just get right into it. This is my initial build right here. Um, I went a little beefier than you have to as if you're just coming from a PC gamer point of view. I obviously render a lot. I made videos. I knew I was going to be doing that. So I went for the i7 processor instead of just an i5. If you're just going to play games, you could absolutely get away with an i5, save some bucks there. Um, I went with the ASRock Z68 Extreme 4 Gen 3. Why? Uh, it was highly recommended when I did my, uh, when I did my build. It was also available in a bundle through Micro Center. If you guys are familiar with Micro Center, I wasn't before I started this process. It's basically think a Best Buy for PC components. It's a, it's a brick and mortar store. I have one. It's not that close to me. It's like an hour and a half away. But I mean, I'm looking at these prices right now. The Intel i7 is listed at about 300. The motherboard's about 200. So the figure $500. I probably got it for at least, uh, I mean, at most 300 when I bought them together right there in store. So you can get some really good deals if you take advantage of that. So that's something you should start looking for if you're thinking of building a PC. And you know, they tend to do these relatively often. Um, they usually kind of have that, that, those bundles going. It's just a matter of seeing the pieces you want that fit what you need and buying it. So I ended up getting a motherboard that was highly recommended. Um, I should also add, as far as research, I use Reddit slash build a PC, I think it's called. I'll supply a link in the description. Really good source. You can post builds there and people will comment on them for you. Uh, I did that for a while, probably a month at least, a month or two, kind of f different builds and, and getting feedback, as well as the uh, KB Mod guys. If you're not familiar with them, KB Mod Gaming is keyboard plus mouse or die. Um, they put out monthly builds, and and they're really well done. If I were to make you a build right here, say a $1,000 budget, what I recommend, I almost guarantee you it would pretty much be exactly as KB Mod has done. They know more than I do, and they do it every month, so they're better, more up. So just go there. Check out their builds. I recommend them. They do good work. And man, some of the power you get for like six, eight, a thousand, six to eight hundred to a thousand dollars is is crazy right now. Um, so I'm just gonna run through. I got Corsair Vengeance, eight gigabytes of RAM. I had a little issue with my RAM. Turned out Corsair Vengeance wasn't, um, gosh, I don't know, like certified for my motherboard. I didn't know that it worked for nine months. I had a little issue after the hurricane. I think something with the power might have done something. I had to yank it out and I got new stuff. No problem with Corsair Vengeance. Very highly recommended brand. Um, I should mention eight gigabytes. Average gamer, that's all you need. Don't be, uh, you know, lured by the sexiness of maxing out your RAM. You don't need it. You're not going to really touch it. I recently just doubled mine to 16, but that again is because I render a lot. I do a lot of rendering and and things like that, and you know, so I do kind of almost max out eight. I still don't really max it out, 
But uh, I just wanted to cross it off my list of possible issues I'm having, and, and RAM is so cheap that I just I was ordering something else and I just added it on, um, so I didn't really even notice it. Uh, but for the average gamer, eight gigabytes is fine, sixteen hundred, and you're good to go. Um, storage, storage. When I built, was a pain in the butt. There was a huge flood in where the heck in Indonesia, Asia, something like that. Um, wherever they make a uh, hard drive uh, platters, I think it mostly, or maybe it was the whole hard drive itself. I don't exactly know. There's a huge flood. You guys might have seen it on the news. And uh, prices for hard drives went way up because a lot of these factories that build these things uh, shut down. And uh, it was a pain in the butt. I knew it. I had to just bite the bullet. I mean, I'm looking here at the Seagate Barracuda that I bought, and it's listed here at $65. I probably paid double that, um, and that was a year ago. Um, and, I, and I knew it at the time. I mean, you could see they have at the bottom of pre-PC part, they have graphs for price graphs. And, I mean, it was like flat bar, flat, and then it just went way up. And, and it hurt to do... But basically, what I, that's why you see here, all I did was a 1 terabyte HDD, 7200 RPM drive. I just did that to just get me started. I knew that I would add more, but I figured I would wait until the prices got more reasonable. I also, my little kind of splurge was a Crucial M4, um, 128 gigabyte SSD. Um, SSDs are not necessary. You don't need one. But I'm telling you, if it's, if it's something you can squeeze in there, it is one of the things you will notice. And it'll quickly become one of the things of, how did I ever do this before one. Uh, games like Skyrim with a lot of loading screens and things like that, it just, I mean, it's quick. It's so quick. My, my PC boots in like under 10 seconds. I, you know, it, it's good for me who I'm always in like Vegas in and out. I mean, it's just, I, I could never not use one. I, in fact, have just ordered another one, 256, just installed it just for games. So now I can have my OS drive, the 128, and then I have my 256 for games. I started off with a GTX uh, GeForce 570. Great card, handled uh, Battlefield just fine. Um, I just recently upgraded. No real reason. Um, I just kind of did a little Christmas present for myself. I won some fantasy football money. Uh, splash cash. So I, I just went ahead and did it. Because, uh, I mean, I basically wanted to bring you guys graphics and ultra. And I'm, I'm looking to kind of upgrade my PC for Battlefield 4. So I have about one year. So I kind of moved up my upgrade cycle a little bit. And uh, I'll probably look at maybe getting a second one for Battlefield 4. We'll see. We'll see how money goes. But, uh... Uh, I, I, I recommend um, the NVIDIA line. I like their drivers. Um, other people might tell you differently. Um, I, can't, I can't go and comment on the other brand. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have any experience. I was always told the drivers are better. I also went with NVIDIA because I was told that um, the CUDA, which is a technology of theirs, helps with rendering. Um, it does. I, I've seen some help. I don't know how much, and I don't know how much that should affect your uh, decision, frankly. But that's the way I went. I have no qualms. I will probably stay in video for some time now unless something big changes. Case, I went with the 922. There was a 912 I was looking at. This I bought as well on sale at Micro Center. Check that out. Uh, this is listed at 100 bucks. I think this is about what it was. I probably got it for 60 Just by buying it in-store. They're doing these deals to get you in there. They're hoping they'll spend bucks on other things, obviously. So I've been in and out of this thing 20, 30 times now. Upgrades and things like that. I have no issues with it. Um, I just cleaned it out yesterday. I was amazed at how little dust and crud it has. As you guys saw, I have three dogs. I have two kids. I have dust in my house. I have dog fur. I, I you know, I, this is not a museum, hardly. Uh, not much is getting in there. It, it's, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, power supply. I got the 850 uh, Corsair Pro Silver, whatever certified. Um, I have plenty of power. Don't chimp on the power supply, guys. I see a lot of guys squeezing money out of there to try to get something else. I understand your motivation. I just don't recommend it. If your power supply can't supply constant the good power, it doesn't matter what your components are. It's not going to work up to what you want. So research the brands, get a good brand, pay for a good brand, and you don't ever have to worry about it. And you know everything's going to get the power it needs. Um, 850 is probably overkill, but I wanted to be able to do an SLI somewhere down the road. It's nice to be able to just buy something, put it in, and not have to worry about do I have enough power. Um, I, I'd have to check if I SLI. Um, another 680 if I have to upgrade. I don't think I will, but I might be close. Like, I might be too close for comfort, so I might just upgrade anyway. I'm kind of taking old parts out of this one. The plan is I'll take old parts out of this one as I upgrade this, and I'm trying to kind of outfit another recording slash Steam box that would go right next to this, and I would do all my recording, all my streaming, so that then I could play my games with no frame loss, and it would be a nice setup. That's the end goal, the pie in the sky. We'll see if I get there. Um, planar monitor I talked about is overspent on that a little bit. There's really good monitors out now. You can spend in a $150 range and be just fine. Um, Asus makes really good monitors. I think I just bought one from my buddy who just built a system like two months ago. Um, Ben K is probably the big high-end monitor now. 
Um, they were just coming out when I built, so I didn't want to just go with a brand new company or new models or whatever. Um, but I hear really good things about them now by people that I trust. So if you're looking for a higher-end monitor, I would recommend Planar. I've had no problems with them, and I would look into BenQ as well. Windows. This drives me nuts. I see guys building a system. They try to cut corners. They try to cut costs by, you know, um, getting a copy of Windows, if you know what I mean. Why on earth would you spend this money to build this kind of a rig with all these top-of-the-line components that's going to kick ass, and then you're going to put a suspect copy of the operating system on there? I don't understand that. I wouldn't do it. It sucks paying the money. I understand. Just do it. You have peace of mind. Now, so that three months down the road, when you, when you think it's just not working right, it's not in the back of your head going, is it the copy of Windows I got? Is there something wrong in there? No. Buy a legit copy. Then you've got you know peace of mind. You can sleep at night, so to speak. It's, there's certain places to cut corners. There's certain places not to, in my opinion. And so I already talked about the keyboard in the other video. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to what I have right now. Um, like I said, I've switched the RAM out. The CPU motherboard obviously stayed the same. I will probably be upgrading them somewhere probably around the Battlefield 4 mark. Um, I'm, that's my target. It's going to be basically when they announce the next line. Um, it kind of depends on them. I'm going to skip a generation, probably go to the next one. Um, I got, like I said, I just upgraded to another. I have four sticks of four gigabyte, um, 1866 RAM, G Skill Sniper. I can't really comment on that, no problems. I added another two terabyte hard drive, Seagate 7200, along with the original one terabyte. And I just added another Crucial M4 256 gigabyte SSD. That is just going to be just for games. So I can take all the games off of my OS drive because, like, games like Battlefield, it's got to be pushing 30 gigs. I just installed Far Cry, which was like 15. It, they're monsters. They can be a pain in the butt. And I don't like my OS drive getting getting too crowded. I get I get issues, you know, with the page file. The skulls just helped me on, thankfully. And I just upgraded to the GeForce GTX 680, which I'm loving. It demolishes whatever I throw at it right now. Uh, pretty much Battlefield and Ultra recording at like 80 frames, 70 frames, which is great for me. Um, hopefully you guys will see some of the better quality, but obviously a lot of that gets lost in rendering and then YouTube's processing. Obviously still the same case. Um, oh yeah, and, I, and I've switched the mouse, like I mentioned to you guys. So I'm going to provide a link again down here with the PC part picker for you guys with all the components. You can go shop around yourself. I get no cut of it. Um, I have no referral things. I didn't want to, you know, I'm, I'm giving you advice on what to buy. I didn't want it to be skewed by any kind of referral code and maybe looking a little shady. I see some people doing that. I don't really approve. Uh, you know, if you're giving a recommendation, it should be honest and straightforward and not with money skewing it. These things are the best that I could figure out. I don't remember exactly, exactly what I bought, but uh, when in doubt, I went with something that I would recommend you buying. Um, like I said, you guys can go there, PC Power Picker, pick these apart as yourself. You can take a look. Um, I've been really happy with my experience in PC gaming. And just like I said, I used to have a fear of PC. Uh, you know, I never put my hands inside the box. I, I never could have told you what RAM was, or hard drives. I, I kind of knew what they were, and I was a guy that studied computer science in, in, in college. So it's pretty sad. I was not a hardware guy at all. I hated that fear. I hated feeling like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and in this day and age, you're really putting yourself at a disservice if that's the case. So how do you get over that fear? You dive in, and that's how I did it. You're not really gambling, guys. It's very easy to build a PC these days. I was telling somebody the other day, if you can put together a piece of IKEA furniture, you can put together a PC. It's it's very simple. They give you good, you know, they give you good instructions, and it's most of it's just snap in and play for the most part. I'm trying to think. I mean, it really wasn't hard at all. Um, and then from there, you're good to go. So anybody thinking about it, I highly encourage it. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Please post them over on the uh, company zero eight forums. There's a bunch of guys talking over there. Um, and hit me up on Twitter, wherever you want. Um, I'd be happy to answer it. I get a kick out of uh, helping people do this because I just did it not that long ago. I remember the process, what it was like. And if I can help you out at all, I would love to do so. That's going to wrap it up, guys. We're about to 15-minute mark, a long one again. But I try to talk fast, but there's a lot of things to kind of talk about real quick. Um, if I missed anything, post it in the comments. Let me know what I missed, what you want to know about. I will make another video kind of talking about that if there's enough stuff. I got some cheap little Logitech... Um, desktop speakers just to come and give me a little sound if I'm gaming I have my headset on this is just kind of for other stuff um, random things I didn't buy them initially and then I realized I need them they're like 20 bucks so just go on Newegg and buy some if you need them alright guys I hope you enjoyed that I hope that was informative and I will talk to you soon take care